I will be introducing comedian Allison Moore. She is the founder of More Laughing Entertainment and Black Please Coffee Company. She blends entertainment and clean comedy with corporate and entrepreneurship. Allison is referred to by her hometown as Virginia's comedian and your conference's coffee. She is not only an award-winning comedian and motivational speaker, but she also has over a decade of human resources experience. Allison is referred to by her hometown as Virginia's comedian and your conference's coffee. She is not only an award-winning comedian and motivational speaker, but she also has over a decade of human resources experience. Allison is passionate about growth and forward momentum. She and her more laughing com community promotes a this time next year mindset that encourages you to think about where you want to be in your personal and professional life by this time next year. For corporate clients, she offers diversity, equity and inclusion content and morale boosting employee engagement content, both of which helps organizations provide professional development for their workplace and risk management for themselves. So without further delay, I'm going to turn it over to Allison Moore. Hey y'all, hey. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Deborah Netta. I, I'm just, I'm, you, you reading it, you made me feel good. This has been a rough day, honey. So sometimes you just got to encourage yourself or you have to send your bio to somebody else so that they can encourage you. Won't he do it? <laughs> like Deborah Netta said, my name is Allison Moore. I go comedian Allison Moore. People ask me like, well, why do you use the Virginia's comedian part? I'm like, cause that's where I'm from. <laughs> and they said, well, how do you get to be Virginia's comedian? I'm like, because ain't nobody else say it. Like, I said it first. <laughs> I said, I'm Virginia's comedian. Don't be mad at me because I said what state that I live in. You could have told people where you live, too. You ain't want nobody to know that you was from Timbuktu. That's not my business. This is part of my brand. And this is what I'm going, I'm going I'm to tell somebody. But I am a clean stand-up comedian. I emphasize the clean part because I don't curse or use profanity on stage. Just be clear, just set the tone where we find this represents a stage. This is my couch stage, but you know, you got to tell people because when they, they hit you a clean comedian, they try to think, they try to think I'm corny y'all. <laughs> like, you know, oh, you're, you're a good girl. No, I just like to get paid for a living. But if I need to, well, I got a sugar honey iced tea in my spirit, but I be, I try to save them. I save them on the sideline. <laughs> I don't like to cash in on my cuss words. <laughs> <laughs> I wait till I'm extra stressed, right? I'm excited to see you all's faces. I did tell the team over at uh, Met, Met Life. I'm like, listen, if y'all got a uh, scary resting faces, like your scary listening face, could you just go ahead and turn your camera off? <laughs> I don't need that for my self esteem now. Some, some people, and then, and then the audiences, people will say to me, but girl, you was just, I was listening. But your listening face is ugly. Like your listening face is mean. So stop. Don't listen or just cut your camera off. <laughs> Cause I'm trying my best. I'm giving you all I got, giving you the best that I, sorry. Sometimes, um, as we're going through this, I think it's important for you to know that I might bust into karaoke every now and then to just lighten the mood it is how I relate to my audience. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So let me see the comedian part of me is I've had the wonderful privilege and opportunity to open for comedic legends like Sinbad. I've opened for Adele Gibbons, the queen of comedy. I've opened for Ricky Smiley and Martin Lawrence. Y'all wait for me to keep going. That's it. That's it. People are like, who else? Girl, that is it. I done gave y'all top four. The best I got. If 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 I would have had somebody else, you would have known who I was. Now, dang on. That's a lot of pressure. See, y'all judge like, okay, girl, keep going. <laughs> All my life I had to fight. Mm. <laughs> Look, I appreciate y'all giving me some of this love on these here emojis and stuff because the virtual comedy is stressful. Can we just get into that? Like I'm right here, like I'm giving my best jokes. I wrote my best and I don't know if my my Wi-Fi frozen or if this is just now resonating. So, you know, thanks for the love. I encourage all my audiences, just laugh by faith. Even if what I'm saying is not funny, just just laugh believing that at some point I'm gonna make you laugh. If, if you get into it first, it makes it easier for me. But if we were all together, I would be reading the room, but I can't, I'm just reading the screen right now. Hold on, let's pause. Let me read the comments, any comments? 
It's okay. Oh, yeah, Alton said on stage. Okay, so that joke hit. Thanks, Alton. <laughs> and a little bit of like what my my thing is or what I do is, you know, I, I like to bring inspiration. I like to bring tools and perspectives that just help us elevate and go to that next level. But I do it using comedy. So I want, you know, because ain't nobody got time to be sitting up here and be bored to death. That they, 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 We don't want to do that. That's literally why I named my company More Laughing Edutainment, because we do a unique blend of entertainment and educate education. I just found that, you know, when I'm bored, I don't really be learning. Is it just, shout out to all my ADHD brothers and sisters out here in these streets. Listen, they waited until I got to my big grown adult age to for me to get my right diagnosis, you know, coming up. I wasn't ADHD. Coming up, I had another diagnosis. It was called BAD. That is what they said. They said I was bad. <laughs> Turns out, Miss Johnson, I am talented, and you didn't know what to do with these skills. <laughs> I want to go back and see all my guidance counselors. I don't care if she is in a nurse or her. Wake Miss Johnson up, because she won't write me in the ninth grade, and I was giving her my best thing on, and I could have been famous by now. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Okay, so listen. So let's get into these pillars of success. So I was so excited about it because that's really been what I've been doing a lot of talking around, what makes people successful. And for me, what I have found on my journey is my pillar of success has been my ability to leverage challenges and setbacks. Now, oftentimes that's not fun for people because don't nobody want to talk about a challenge and a setback. Can we get into it? <laughs> like, well, we are moving forward. They don't even want to think about it. But for me, I've seen and I found even with other successful people and my mentors and things like that, that it is their ability to pull the jewels out of those challenges, those traumatic moments, those setbacks, those seasons of like, what the heck? is going on and so I want to laugh a little bit about it but then I also want to give us a few tips and techniques on how we can look into our situations and be empowered to pull out what's good in this so we can set ourselves up for the next season of success and going into this new year this is a good time to be setting ourselves up for something totally different than whatever the heck we've been in in these last two pandemicals <laughs> I don't know what this is and looks like we're going in another year of a pandemical guys but just stay strong keep your head up Anime, if you die, I'm going to kill you. I need y'all to stay with me, Black Professionals Network. We friends now, okay? On behalf of my kids, they say thank you because they can eat now, okay? So I need everybody in here. I have a vested interest that all of y'all saw. <laughs> Whatever I need to do to make sure that we take it to the next level. So, like, this is literally my season. You know, I, I, I'm really living out of a pulling out of the challenges, pulling out of the setback. Even before the pandemic, I, my family and I experienced a tragedy. We had a house fire. So we lost everything. Our whole house burned down. Now I'll skip to the end of the chapter or the book to say, the good news is everybody was okay. We didn't lose any people, but we lost all of our things. So what had happened was y'all, my children we're home alone cooking french fries, burn my whole house down. Y'all, can we, I just have a moment. Burn my whole house down, so I'm sitting in this now. I know, right, I know. Now, the good news is I'm sitting in this beautiful home now, right? And so there's so many positive things that have come out of it, but it took a minute to get there. And without the right mindset, without the right accountability partners and my support system, I would not have seen all of the positive things about it. And sometimes you have to be reminded, you have to be cushioned in environments, networking events like this with like-minded people, other people who you're talking closely with that can help you Yo, you things are not as bad as it seems. You got this. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Have you ever considered this? And that's what helps us go to that, stay in that place where we're not spiraling down, where we can use the momentum of the challenge to go up. So my kids, they were home alone. They were cooking French fries. They burned the whole house down, y'all. What in the world? Those are some expensive French fries. Listen, <laughs> some French fries cost me $200,000. Got to be more careful. I'll never want to see another French fry. That is for sure. They be bringing me French fries at the restaurant. I say, yo, mama want a French fry. Don't put no French fries on my plate. <laughs> on my plate, golly. <laughs> Because of the house fire, we were displaced. So my family was displaced for a year. We were in and out of a hotel. That was very challenging. Y'all, I don't like hotels, for real. Y'all, I got a little PTSD. I don't never want to see another white sheet. 
Now I got two reasons. <laughs> Already they like white sheets, y'all. <laughs> Little extra just melanin got me allergic to white sheets. Now they had me in a hotel. I'm like home with some. <laughs> I was, it, it was a lot easy, y'all. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. I'm good. We here now. <laughs> we here. But being displaced for a year was challenging. It was hard for the family. The adjustments, the back and forth. I have three children. All of that was challenging. I asked my children, I'm like, so when the house was burning down, like, what y'all do? The kitchen on fire? Like, what what you do? My son was like, nothing, Mom. I mean, clearly I see that, but what you, what you mean? What you, what, you, you ain't do nothing like me, Mom. I ran. Okay. <laughs> you ran, huh, son? Like, yeah, Mom. Because you said if you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen. You waited 17 years to listen to me. You ain't had to start now. God, God, you ain't never paid attention to nothing I said. That's going to be the principle that we apply. That's what we're doing. Okay. Okay, but you say, you say, it's okay. You did the right thing. <laughs> but it was hard, y'all. We lost everything. So, like, all my stuff was in that house. And that was particularly challenging for me because both of my parents are deceased. So, both my parents... They are no longer here. All my childhood stuff was in that house. So everything was in the house. My childhood stuff in the house. Furniture and everything was in the house. You know, low key, I'll be honest with y'all. My mama was in the house too because we had uh, we had cremated her. So she was sitting on the fireplace when the house got on fire again. And y'all, my kids made me cremate my mama twice, y'all. <laughs> y'all, I know they right. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, y'all. That deep fried my mama, y'all. That ain't right. <laughs> y'all. Y'all, my mama was light-skinned when she was here on earth. We done sent her back to heaven looking like me. <laughs> she she dark-skinned now, y'all. <laughs> she done got up there with the angels. The angels looked at her like, what's your name? What's your name? We see your name in the book, ma'am, but you don't look the same as you look on your driver's life. <laughs> They were like, oh, hold on, let's go call the manager. They had to call my manager. They had to call the manager, y'all, my mama got up there. And the manager guy came out there. He looked at her and he said, hmm, well done. <laughs> said, well done. I done well done, my mama, y'all. <laughs> Listen, that was a season, y'all, for real. That was a season. Now, obviously, <laughs> it's hilarious now, but it was not funny then. I was traumatic and triggering, and I was just doing everything that I could to stay in great spirits. But turns out, I'm not the only person that had a house fire. Did you know? Other people out here having a house fire, too. People are like, oh, yeah, girl, I remember the time. Did my, my kitchen get caught on fire? I'm like, oh, so that's a thing. That's a whole thing. But oftentimes, when we're in our season, we don't even realize that other people have similar seasons, right? Or we're not the only people that go through. But in isolation and in lack of resources and a team that's around us, then we do find ourselves feeling like, oh, it's just me. It's just me. I'm all alone. Ain't nobody never had a paper cut like this. <laughs> like, no, turns out, girl, we all get paper cuts. But we need to be reminded of those moments. We need to be empowered so that we can switch up our perspective. So, okay, so we like, all right, so girl, your house burned down. And it was a lot of soot and everything. We get it. What this got to do with us? Okay, glad you didn't ask. So let's talk about this pillar of success. So in this, you know, obviously I'm laughing about a very traumatic time. Boom. It's like, okay, well, you're a comedian, girl, but uh, duh, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I mean, yeah. However, I also want to encourage you to see how you, too, can find some humor, but more importantly, find the tools and things, the jewels that you need within that challenge, within that obstacle. <clears throat> one thing about life, one thing about adulting is we are all going to have some challenges. So listen, if you ain't had one, spoiler. You up next, because I done had my time. Listen, y'all, I can't do another one. I already told him, the Lord, I said, listen, here, I done did the house fire, and did this pandemical. Can I get a break? I'm on a sabbatical. But some of y'all might be up next, and I just want to give y'all some tips just in case you find yourself in a little rough season, okay? So here are some things that I like to, when I encourage, like, my team, my mentees, you know, when they're talking about, like, man, this is the space that I'm in. This is the situation that I'm in. Woe is me. A, like Debronetta said, I am huge proponent for growth mindset. It's always for me about where am I trying to be this time next year or five years or 10 years. But the long-term vision is a lot harder to draw out. 
that one year vision, that's enough to get us inspired, encouraged, and move forward. It's like, where do you want to be exactly a year from now? And let's reverse engineer on how to get ourselves there. But when you have a challenge, okay, when you got a setback, you're thinking about your, like, dang, this is my situation. This is where I'm unhappy. You ask yourself a couple of questions. So the first thing that I ask myself about when I encourage people to ask themselves about their challenges is, what is relatable about what you're going through? Like sometimes, again, we just have to be reminded that we're not the only people who have been in some junk. So what is relatable? For me, when I'm talking about the house fire, it was relatable. People can relate to those who have had a fire or those who have lost personal things, those who have had a, a, a challenge that's made them have to move unnecessarily. There is that relatability. The next step that I like to take, and especially for like entrepreneurs who are looking for ways to pivot, who are looking for what makes it, you know, what makes that subject expertise people in, you know, they tell speakers all the time, like, what are you good at? What do you do? And then what do you do that's a little extraordinarily unique within that commonality, right? So even with the challenge, I say, what about your relatable challenge is unique? So I just share with you, you know, the joke about the fire. And I'll say, you know, my family and I, we had a house fire. People are like, man, dag, I'm sorry to hear that. And some people are like, man, we've had it. We had to move or we had a flood or we had that experience too. The uniqueness part of my story is my kids did it. <laughs> They're like, ooh. <laughs> that's how you know it's unique. And people are like, okay, okay, girl, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> that's how you know that's your special gift. That's your special gem. You know, now with my kids going ahead and burning down the house fire, you know, I wasn't mad at them. Well, I, I was a little mad because I was mad. They were like, why y'all stop at the house? Why y'all didn't get the car? I got me driving up to a brand new house in a hoop den. <laughs> We didn't think this all the way through. So, I, you know, I'm working on my kids for the next succession plan. You know, we're not going to do fire and do the same thing again twice, but we're coming for that water. Listen, here, if it's going to be a hurricane or a flood, you better know I'm going to be driving down my street. I'm going to be, you. that's my car. You ain't going to ask no questions. That's me. Mind your business and judge your mama. But in your reflecting on the challenge, in the reflecting on the setback, and when we're saying what makes this unique, because I'm not alone, I'm not the only person that can understand this, there's content, there's jewels in that, we've answered that question. And then we go to the next question. Well, when we say, what about my situation is relatable? Then we go to the next question that is, what about my relatable situation may be unique, right? What is the bright side of this, right? Like, what did I get out of this challenge? And so for me, when I list that, okay, I have a house fire, I lost a lot of things, right? But the bright side is I don't have the same type of attachment to material things anymore. I mean, I didn't choose to, no, no, I didn't choose because I had this teddy bear called the Popples, y'all. I lost my Popples. I had Popples since I was two. But that's okay. That's okay. Maybe I shouldn't have had it in my great grown adult age, but that's okay. Don't worry about me. Judge your mama. But I, I, was able to be detached from material things that has helped me in moving forward. Another thing is I got a brand new house. And for me, that has been a come up, especially in this pandemic. Cause I ain't gonna lie that house before this, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Y'all. It wouldn't have been no me. I wouldn't have been on this call. Not in that rag the house. Everything was falling apart. I had one of those houses that was always lying about having company. Cause I knew it was only about two and a half spaces that you could sit down. Cause everything was falling apart. It was. And so with House Fire, I was able to get a brand new house, some new furniture. That's why I'm here flossing on y'all now with my background. Get into it. Don't look, don't get in too much, too much. Everything, all the trash on the floor, but you judge your mom. Everything up is clean. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I got to take away, okay, this was hard. This was a challenge. We were displaced, but I got a brand new house. Last thing that I needed right now in a pandemic is to be trying to fix things and re renovate and all of that during this time where everybody was locked in the house. One of the good things that I got out of the pen, or excuse me, out of my challenge, out of my trauma was my ex and I, we went ahead and we split up. I was a 17 year marriage. We called it a quits because of the fire. I'm just kidding. It won't cover the fire. Girl, that marriage was terrible. A long time before the fire, but we got a brand new house. But anyway, that ain't got nothing to do with y'all either. I try to wrap it in there. Like, you know, as a we, the marriage couldn't take it because of the fire. The fire, like, first of all, we gonna take credit for the stuff. We ain't got nothing to do with your love life. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna be accountable there. But anyway, that's about me, not about you. 
But you ask yourself, within your situation, within your challenges, what is the bright side? What did you get out of it? Something else, my fourth thing that I ask myself in the middle of challenges, in the middle of setbacks, because what are we trying to do? We're trying to extract things that will make us successful from these moments. The fourth thing that I ask myself is, okay, what did I start doing? Or I'll ask people, what did you start doing regularly as a result of this challenge, as a result of this setback? When things change up for us, we we get these new habits, we get these new passions, sometimes we're introduced to things, we gotta, you know, if one road is closed, that's normally the road that we go home on every day, now we have to take a detour, we realize like, oh, that's a pretty house, I never even noticed that house before, so what houses did you notice in this new season that you're in as a result to the obstacle that happened, right? For me, I found myself, I mean, it was very hard because we were displaced, because we were in a hotel, I had to take my three kids to different schools. My Everything about my life had changed and how we had to move and how I had to try to quickly pull everybody together so we wouldn't fall apart. I started to create this time slot in the morning where I was going to wake up and I was going to drink coffee. Whether I drank the coffee or not, it was just my little moment. I had created this. And probably before that, I would lie all the time and say, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and I'm going to pray and I'm going to just meditate. It didn't never happen. But honey, let's me say something to you. When you're in a hotel because you're house firm there, you get up. You do. <laughs> you get up. Huh? You get up. So I found myself, you know, regularly just drinking coffee and that was my thing. At the same time, people were still calling me like, hey, girl, you want to come and do some comedy? I'm like, no, I ain't got nothing to laugh about. I don't laugh about no soot. I'm tired. I'm frustrated i don't have the funny because if somebody looking at me in that audience I'm, i might you know i might have to bring up my sugar honey iced tea remember i told y'all i was banking them up and i had a lot by this time you understand what i'm saying but in that i developed this ritual and this coffee thing and then that turned into me really pushing into or pivoting my business to being a morning speaker and i was always having coffee and that was the thing and so then i created this or add it on to my brand as comedian Allison Moore, your conference is coffee. Because it was just something that was just always on my mind. And I was always, you know, people would always say anyway, when you come and you speak, you bring great energy, you wake everybody up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's how I'm like, I'm around here because I was, you know, <laughs> heavy on the coffee. But that was my thing. And so when I took a step back, my challenges have really set me up for so much more success. I now had this morning brand piece. I had this story, the fire that I was able to uh, share. I was able to bring awareness to that. I was able to talk to people who were going through those types of challenges and transitions. On top of that, I realized that, man, I'm not alone. This is not really as embarrassing as it feels. This is not a space where I have to be on the island and be isolated because... So many people have dealt with that. It helped my self-esteem. It helped my confidence. It helped me realize like, yo, this is life. And life is going to have its turbulences, but I can take advantage of this. And so that is where, you know, I give that example on how you can find success from these challenges that you're experiencing or the setbacks that you're experiencing. And I empower you to use your past, you know, when it hurts when we're uncomfortable, when it didn't pan out the way that we wanted it to, then ain't nobody trying to talk about no past. Who? Who? Well, I done went to a couple of auditions and I ain't making it and I ain't tell nobody about it no more. I talked the whole way there like, oh, y'all about to see me in this movie. It ain't happening. I ain't say nothing else. And if somebody would have asked me, I had attitude. Hey, girl, I saw you online. How did you shut up? You just shut up. I mean, I want you to support me and I thank you so much for caring, but shut up. <laughs> But then I had to realize, like, we're not about to be embarrassed because something didn't pan out the way that you wanted it to. We're not going to be uncomfortable by that. In fact, that's so relatable. So many people have found themselves being excited about something. Everybody knows about it. It don't happen. We're not going to be silenced, Allison. But I had to take myself through those different moments and those different questions before I let this punk me into feeling like, man, I'm a failure. Let me ask myself, what about this challenge was relatable is relatable what about this relatable space is unique to you because that's your subject that's your niche that's your specialty what within this did you find yourself starting to do regularly as a result of this setback let's say if i'm using the acting analogy i found myself preparing differently for auditions i found myself doing a different type of research because i didn't want to be told no no more you wait till i come back i'm gonna come back stronger Still ain't work, but whatever. I found me a new path and some new things with that. And then again, fourthly, was the. I'll, you know what? Let me tell you something. I like these claps. 
I, I try to hold on, but I'm like, you know what? Thank you so much for these claps that y'all giving me. Cause all my life I had to fight. Y'all cameras going in and out, and I'm like, is this because this ain't good? No, stay focused, girl. Just stay focused. They they did not come up here to be your therapist. You supposed to be helping them. See, that's what happens with the relationship between the speaker and the audience. It crosses, it blends. I'm like, y'all come to the stage now and encourage me. That is not why y'all are here. But anyway, so those are, you know, my pillars of success. So that's how I have found and been able to recover, recover quickly and get a bag as a result of it. And I know that that is what we want. We want bags because, you know, the smile and stuff is cute, but we got bills and things to pay and wealth to grow in. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So before we go, let me see. Does, does anybody have any questions? Cause I know you told me to do my question and answers, my Q and A. <laughs> and I know I was talking funny. I mean, talking funny. Well I, well, I hope it was funny, but talking fast because you know, I'm nervous. And then also too, I wanted to make sure I got my time in and all my points. What questions you all have for me before we, before we wrap up? <laughs> Um, Allison, hi, this is Sharice with Cisco. Um, would love to, and I think we would all really benefit from hearing your, your self talk. So what was the, the internal conversation you would have with yourself when you're having to go through this process? Cause I think that positive self talk is a game changer. So I'd love to hear what yours was. Yeah. So my self talk was, girl, you got three kids. What we go, how we going at? Now you see what the mess your mom and your daddy left you in, you're gonna do the same thing to your own kids. Now, I mean, can I just be real with you? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. have to break this generational curse here. We cannot collapse under pressure. We don't, we're not gonna do that. We are going to have to keep our head up high because these kids are gonna have the same type of challenges that you're having. And if somebody don't teach someone how to deal with trauma, we're gonna keep repeating these same cycles. So for me, it was definitely a uh, I, you know, I was very upset. I, I I inserted the joke about both my parents being deceased, but both my parents really are deceased. And I'm like, first of all, y'all ain't leaving me no million dollars. And turns out y'all supposed to be leaving me some money. I don't like this. this. This ain't right. And I found myself in a space where I'm like, hmm, if you don't do something different, especially when we lost that, when we had that house fire, I realized you won French fry away. <laughs> from a hard season, girl, we got to do something different. And so for me, it was definitely, what's the legacy that you're trying to leave? What do you want to teach your kids? What are you, how are you getting through this mess? Cause you probably might be in some more mess and we need to make sure that you, you can function, that you sane, that you are healthy. We ain't, you know, repeating toxic parenting and that the kids have the skill set that if they are not here, that they can overcome a real hard challenge as well. So I hope that if you don't like that one, give me some time. I'm going to write something down and I'm going to email it to you to make it sound better. I, I feel like that was even better because you were real. Like sometimes it's hard to handle that realness, you know, but you're just like, this is what it is. I got this option or this option. And I love that. So, Thank yeah. Thank you. Well, what else y'all got? You know, no, give me the hard ones now. I'm going to have to text you my answer on my hard ones. <laughs> Give me, a, give me another one like Sharice did that I'm going to nail this because I need one of y'all employees to call me for your January event. Hello. Hi. This, hi. This is Sandra Carter. I am not on camera. Okay. Yeah, you say that to you. I'm like, Sandra. Uh-uh. No, man. Sandra, don't do Because if like I was that. on camera, you would be comedian me like they do in the front row. Oh, no, so I'm, I, 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 I got childhood trauma. I don't pick on people. I don't pick on people unless they pick on me. See, growing up, you might not notice it, but growing up, I was dark skinned. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. uh -huh. So I was dark skinned girl in the South. But you know, we don't, I don't do no teasing. I don't know how to tease. I don't, we going to fight. So I don't want to tease you. You don't got to tease me. Don't worry about it. But Sandra <laughs> just need to know what square you're in because I'm a little tired. I'm a little okay. tired. I want my eyes to be wandering around. I don't want to scare y'all, but sometimes after hours, my eyes do some things. So just let you know. <laughs> You got the best of my eyes. So go ahead, Queen. What you got? Okay, honey. So I, like I said, I am not, I'm not coming on camera because I am not video uh, <laughs> worthy right now. However, I did want to say to you that the fact that you find your silver lining within your disasters, so to speak, has been refreshing um, to turn um, a negative into a positive in this environment that we live in is refreshing. The fact that you can take a serious situation and laugh at yourself does cause other people to be able to relate and release and just let go. 
So it's appreciative. I appreciate you, um, you know, just coming in and being yourself, even though because when you were saying it at first, I was like, um, is she joking or is this for real? But then as you kept talking, I was like, oh, no, she's for real. Like, her house did really burn down with her kids doing some dang on French fries. And I'm like, wow, her, both her parents are, are deceased. But the way that you take that and bring joy from it is it is an art that you have that you have conquered. Um, and it's actually something that I don't think that any any and everybody can can possess or do possess. It's something that has to be a gift. So I applaud you for your gift and thank you for your time in sharing with us. I really appreciate that. Now, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to step away from you saying I'm great. <laughs> I don't want to take all that. But I do think, though, that everybody can. You know, people say, like, man, everybody can't do that. I'm like, no. Hey. Now, you know, you don't have to because that's what makes this brand work for me. But I want to leave you with the tools to know you can. You can look at your situation and you can laugh at it. Literally, you can break down the joke. Within your setback, what is relatable? That's already with something that the whole audience can identify with if let's say you were actually standing on stage to tell the joke but if you want to just make yourself laugh what is relatable for your challenge like oh man i just lost my job everybody has lost a job before most people have lost a job before or man my car broke down okay wow that's relatable your car broke down or i'm had this very bad breakup that's relatable then we say okay well what makes it unique well what makes it unique about my bad breakup is that i was always musty and so my ex couldn't take it okay so there we go that is what is funny we gonna get into this joke. You a little much. We gonna we gonna fix that for the next time. But you know, hey. Or if your car broke down, what's unique about it is you know somebody was on a sneaky link when their car broke down. They had no business. That is what is funny. <laughs> <laughs> the uniqueness. But you really can, and I want to empower you all to laugh at your situations as well too. And Sandra, I appreciate you. You know, just saying that because sometimes people do like, oh, my God, she's talking about her mama passing away. And I have to, you know, make the audience feel a little comfortable. These are jokes you allow them <laughs> to laugh. I asked my mother, could I talk about this? Mm -hmm. I was like, Mom, are you cool with me talking about you being in heaven and everything? I said, if you don't like this, Ma, come back. She's okay. not here, y'all. So she good. She good. So you can laugh. So, so just to care to, to clarify in the back, um, piggyback off of what you just said, I do totally agree with you when you say that everybody can find that silver lining. However, specifically when I'm referring to you is the talent you have to be on stage and do stand up comedy. No, ma'am, everybody does not have that. That is a gift, but I do agree with you as far as the, you know what I'm saying? The silver, yeah. like we all can laugh at ourselves. So I wanted to give you that compliment and ma'am, please accept it. That I everybody it. cannot do stand up comedy and you did a great job. Okay. <laughs> did y'all hear Queen Sandra? She said, okay. she said okay. what she said. Okay. So y'all don't have, you don't have to have an event and be bored. You don't have to have an event and not set it up for the other speakers to have a great audience. You called me, Sandra already said it. I know that I'm like pushing up against my time, Debra and so I don't want to be disrespectful for the calendar, but I do appreciate everybody's attention and you all laughing with me and the great virtual energy that we have. I have here, let me see, I'm going to put my name in here because I'm fancy. I already pre-typed it. Comedian Allison Moore. So I am on Instagram. If you want to make me go viral, feel free, but you know, no pressure. It's only about a thousand of us up there, but you know, we're a small army in the Moore Laughing family. People love me. My my audience is a little bit older, so they don't really get into the virtuals and everything. And that's why I don't have a lot of followers. But you don't judge me, judge your mama. But listen, for Christmas, I want to share this. So I got coffee, for real, y'all. Black Please Coffee. And that was one of the things that came out of my season. I was a morning speaker coming to these conferences. I was saying, like, hey, I'm waking everybody up. So I was like, man, I should have coffee as a product. And so I came up with Black Please please coffee. So when you get a chance, if you're interested, please, please go to our website, black, please coffee. Y'all, you got to put coffee up there because Allison Moore is a famous porn star, but it ain't me. Y'all, it ain't me. It's a white woman. It ain't, it is not me. Okay. But shout out to the sisters that do what they got to do. <clears throat> so you got to put comedian Allison Moore when you Google me. Ladies, if your man is up there for a long time talking about he watching Allison's material, I don't have that much content on YouTube. Got about 30 minutes. Okay. So if you up there longer than that, you go, you go go in the basement and check on them. Anywho, if you go to Black Please, Black Please is also a porn site. 
I didn't. I ain't set this up. I just thought it was witty because I'm black and coffee, black please. I didn't know until I tried to get trademark that it was a porn site. To which I then said, maybe God is trying to call me to the porn ministry. Don't worry, I don't. Three kids, I ain't got the body for that. But I will. I will narrate a porn. I'm just telling y'all now. They have a funny part, a clean, funny section that only fans call me. I will. I'm a content creator, so you mind your business. But we got delicious organic coffee. So I would love for you all. And oh, and like Debra said, I do some speaking with organizations about diversity, equity, inclusion, you know, bringing humor to some of these heavier conversations and making it more comfortable for people in the workplace. So that's my little package offering. And I am so grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this event. Thanks again, MetLife. Thanks again, Black Professionals Network. Y'all to be a Black Professionals Network up here, huh? I am very happy to just be your professional with you all and just excited about what you're doing for yourselves and being a part of this event today. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I definitely took a lot of gems for that. And the irony of it all, Allison, I didn't um, share this with you when we did our quick chat, but my four-year-old um, caused the toilet to overflow. And it went from the second floor down to the first floor. So it's definitely relatable. <laughs> and it is a traumatic experience yes. when you are living in it. So I definitely took away some jewels that I'll be able to apply to Thank my you. own personal life in the future. And I hope those that are on the call also took away some jewels. I'm going to